The U.S. Secret Service and local police play the blame game. So who was responsible for the lax security that allowed a 20-year-old to open fire on America's 45th president? How did he get on that roof so close to the Trump rally? And what is God's message about all of this to the country? Well, joining us is Michael Letts. He's founder and president of Invest USA, a nonprofit. Michael's also a chaplain of the Columbia, South Carolina Police Department and a member of the South Carolina State Counterterrorism Council. Michael, I guess what most Americans are wondering is how was Thomas Matthew Crooks able to get on that building, fire off eight rounds of the Trump rally beyond just climbing on that air conditioner and lifting himself up on the roof? Well, Gary, there are so many breaches of protocol, standard procedure that should have been done. It's hard to imagine that could have happened accidentally. We believe there had to be additional help for that to be accomplished. Let's go through just a few of the main ones. First of all, that station, or we, we call it a bar in the building, was identified by the advance team as a primary threat to security. Usually when there's a primary threat, we assign agents to that particular location. First of all, that was never done here. Second of all, the assailant was identified both on the outer perimeter and once he got on the roof by, oddly enough, just civilians alone notifying the local law enforcement and the Secret Service. All this is recorded on video, so it's non-disputable. No action was taken. Highly unusual. Third thing, anytime you even suspect, Gary, that there is a gun, you immediately get you into the communication system. The Secret Service team for formulates around the president, securing him and getting him off right away. That was never done, never communicated that there was a gun. The fourth thing is when he was preparing to fire, the assailant was preparing to fire, RCAs that were on the barn closest to the president already had him in their sight, had him lined up, request permission to engage. The permission was not granted for 43 seconds until after he had already begun firing. That, how you could even possibly begin to come up with an explanation for that is beyond me. So those are the key things, Gary, and we could spend an hour talking about all the other protocol breaks, but those in and of itself, you don't get that many protocol breaks all coincidentally happening at the same time for the same event. So Michael, you're saying this was intentional then, uh, on whose part, on the, on the part of the local police, on the part of the Secret Service, who? No, the Secret Service is fully in charge of that scene. Now, they will argue because of the fact, you have to understand, president at that time did not have a full presidential package because he was not the sitting president, nor was he the nominee till Monday. He had a downgraded package, which is what we give to former president. However, because he is under such threat all the time, his security was asked to be increased three separate occasions. That went to the director, the secretary of Homeland Security, my orchestra, and to the president's office himself. All three times it was denied. So there's no question for a person to get that close to the president. He didn't do that on his own. There had to have been some assistance in getting him into that position. Well, well I guess we'll find out more then next week uh, when uh, Comer has his hearings. So Trump later said that uh, God alone spared his life. How do you think this may affect his attitude and his politics? Well, in talking to him, I can tell you this, and it's very obvious. If you look at his rallies, say, a month ago, two months ago, and you look at him Monday night, you will see a change in his perception. He is a humble man. He knows for a fact, without question, this was God's intervention and God's intervention alone, and it has affected his outlook, quite frankly, God chose him for this hour, and I don't think anybody can deny that. And Michael, what, what do you want people to know about this historic tragedy, uh, the economic, cultural, and political tumult that the nation is experiencing? What do we need to know? What is God doing here? Well, I think a couple key factors here, Gary. First of all, I know for quite some time now, there have been thousands upon thousands of Americans praying. God hears his children. He answers prayer. Keep that in mind. Second of all, he and he alone determines what the future for this country is and what the outcome will be. And regardless of the epic battle between good and evil and the devil doing all he possibly can to destroy our country, God has not done with us yet. And God answered his people's prayer and God alone protected President Trump. And there are great things in store for the days ahead. And, and as you say, a lot of Christians are on their knees praying. So how should we pray at this time? What should we pray about? 
Well, let me encourage your listeners and your viewers for this. You know, evil doesn't just walk away when they don't get their way. And so we don't expect this to be the end of this situation. Now, in the days ahead, more than ever, if we're not on our knees, then God will not be able to complete what he wants to do. Make sure that we continue to acknowledge the presence of God, the fact that this country will only survive with his protection and his divine intervention. That's where we need to be first. Second of all, God always calls us in scripture to make sure that we are good stewards of the time he's given us. Good stewardship means that we have an obligation to the Lord and to this country to make sure that we proclaim the truth and we engage to make sure that our future generations have the opportunity to hear God's word and to respond. So don't sit back on your laurels now. The fight is just getting intense. Stay in there, stay in prayer, and then volunteer. That's the key, Gary. This country is built on volunteerism. Volunteer to be involved and to make sure you help America bring a revival back to this country. Okay, Michael Letts of Invest USA. Thank you, Michael, for joining us today. We appreciate you. God bless you. God bless you, Gary.